If there's one thing that's changed my life that has been so evidently clear to everyone, if you're a human being, right now this is a debatable question, it's called play. Now you probably don't know what that looks like, especially at this point in life, because play is either seen as foolish, childish, God forbid, and unnecessary. Now you can see that clearly based off of how you went to school. You can ask me how much play really went on there and then how much play you have at work and you could tell me how much play goes on there and then you could tell me how much play goes on in your relationship and you can tell me probably little to none because you're too busy posturing. But there's something very important here and it's the thing that actually changed my life and I really want to show you how it did. This is going to be a part one. There's going to be a part two and I want to really give you an understanding of what it took for me to understand myself fully. So of course, first part is going to be integration meaning understanding of what you are as a human being that you perhaps live without that you reject. The other is being able to integrate the aspects of you in your, I guess you could say your light or the manifestation of childlikeness collectively together towards a higher ideal. And so I remember the most impactful time of my life and it was easily one of the most impactful times of my life, probably the best time of my life. There was this one point in my life where I came out of a relationship and you know, I speak about this a lot because so much happened because I was so open to life. I was open to life for the first time. You know, I was also open to investigating parts of myself. And I don't know, maybe you guys have had those moments where you, you find yourself looking, searching. You, you want to discover more about you, but now you go on YouTube, you open it up and you have a whole list of these guys either yelling at you, telling you what you need to do, but they're also never allowing you to discover who you are to actually start not doing things, but becoming someone. And there's a very big distinction between the two. And ultimately, look, I'm gonna be honest, you're gonna destroy everything you start if you're not doing it with you. Because what's the point? Everything you do is in opposition of who you are and your subconscious knows that and it goes, whoa, 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 comment, comment, easy, easy. So I really needed to discover who I was also who I'm becoming. And I really wanted to make sure of one thing, that where I'm starting from is true. And you know, I'm maybe I'm sure you've heard this, pick something, commit to it, and you'll find out partially. But why not discover the parts of you that you authentically desire, even if it feels childish? So here it goes. I was a year and a half into my abstinence spree after my relationship and all of my hidden darkness. That's a whole different conversation. And I remember I was genuinely looking to discover. I wanted to discover, you know, and honestly, sometimes we become so unaware of what's in front of us and the things that are clearly being told to you. And I'm sure maybe you've experienced that on an intuitive level. Like I should have done that such a long time ago. And you've had thoughts and ideas. Maybe it's, hey, do this one thing and it's arbitrary and it's weird. Or maybe it's, hey, talk to this one friend. And you know, we always talk about how we want guidance, but we never really trust the guidance that is given. So eventually that guidance begins to dissipate. So I remember this time where I decided to give everything that I could to the environment around me. And I also started to consider the desires I have, and this is going to be the most important thing, the desires you have, and even the authentic impulses, whatever they may be, reoccurring things that come to your mind, maybe as weird as it sounds, and sometimes it will sound as weird as this. Naftali Moses, play Halo 2. And I'm like, what am I hearing in my head? Wake up the next morning. Halo 2, Halo 2, Halo 2. I'm, I'm actually beginning to think that this is ridiculous. You know, when we think of personal development and personal help, and we think about words from God, we think of Moses, <laughs> I call on to thee. Right? And you're like, okay, that's a little too obvious. Sometimes it's actually more obvious because if you realized how personal that is, you would go, okay, I, I believe, you know? And so I remember I was listening to this and I, and I heard, play Halo 2, play Halo 2. I recently saw my brother get married and that really changed the way that I see my life. And one of the new people I was hanging around after I lost all of my clients, I went from 30 clients to four, from never giving my mother a hug to hugging her every morning to never hanging out with my father, to hanging out with a coffee, to rejecting every part of myself, to just beginning to accept it. I know everyone's so afraid of that because then maybe that'll mean progression in your life. To then investigating the desire and sharing that with the people around me. So this friend and me, I guess we both came out, we're both like experiencing a reality crisis because we're, we're, we can't even trust the world that's coming out of our eyes. And so I'm like, dude, my brother would never marry a girl like that. And my friend was like, I don't know how he did that. This isn't my, this isn't my friend, right? And we were both there experiencing, I guess you could say the same misfortune. And I told him, I said, Hey man, I keep having this weird desire. And he's like, well, what is it? It's like to play Halo 2. And he looks at me. And if you want to know something about my friend and the synchronicity of life, he's what you call a Peter Pan. A Peter Pan is somebody that refuses to grow up, but also shows you your youth. Neverland. 
the part of you that is forever within us. And you guys may love this, but an inner child, an aspect of ourselves that needs to be fed, forever lives throughout your life, no matter how old you get, and has existed in the past and exists in the present. So it's something that can collectively exists throughout your whole life that needs to be incorporated. It is the part of you and the reason why you are here. It is something that needs to be considered without rejection or eradication. And you know, my whole life it was, hey Naftali, you really wanna make a change, pick up a personal development book. Go watch a video on YouTube. Oh, there's Alex Hermosi and you pull your pants down, right? No, it's like, you really wanna find who you are. It's not so much the collection of information, but more of the integration of who you are and facing the appropriate information. And you'll never find that if you never play as yourself. And so of course he was the Peter Pan that I met and we exchanged values of sorts. And I told him, I said, hey, no more alcohol, no more bad food habits, and consistency with behavior. And he said, okay, sounds good. So the journey started and it started by playing. So of course, what did I play? Every day we would come to the gym, we would work out. After we work out, we pick up the sticks and we play Halo 2. Now this was somebody I grew up with in my life and he was able to appreciate the nostalgia behind an older video game. When I picked up the video game, I didn't question how old I was. I didn't think about what I needed to do or who I needed to be. For the first time, I trusted my intuition. And because I trusted it, it was worth something priceless. Every night after the gym, we get our lift in, we pick up the remote and we're playing Halo 2. And, and we would come up with things that were so creative. We would come up with improv, with lines. And every time he would die, I would die. And I'm a professional Halo 2 player and have been a competitive Halo player up until I was 19. So nobody can beat me in that. And this really weird desire I had at 22 to play the game, once all my clients left, my brother got married and the house is clearing out. And finally, I'm investigating myself through play. And I remember we were making all of these jokes, you know, we, we'd be driving in the Warthogs and be talking about how we're like fast and furious and we yelling out for family, for family, right? And we would record it as we're playing the game. And he's 25, I'm 22, and somehow my life began. Every time, and just to give you an idea of how difficult this was, this was not only difficult, Halo 2 on Legendary, you could look it up. I'm sure there's a video I can like tag in here where you guys can understand how damn difficult the game is. It's already difficult enough on your own. Now, if you play it with a friend who sucks, it's almost impossible because every time he dies, I die. And so of course he's running out into the firing lines where there's a bunch of these aliens that you shouldn't be doing that with. And he's getting killed and I'm losing my mind, but now he's laughing, but it requires me to be better. So I'm like protecting him like I'm John Wick and he's just like a delusional child running into the battlefield. And somehow I managed to beat the game, somehow. On top of us playing the video game, I would also go out wearing the outfits I wanted to wear. And I don't know if you guys remember this, but once you were kids, I think I know what your favorite holiday was. Halloween, especially if you're a boy. That's gonna be the part where you get to dress up. And holy shit, the most human thing you can do is dress up as the characters you connect to. And I was like, well, who do I connect to? I was watching the show Lucifer all the time. And I was like, black suit, red bottoms. And oh, who else do I connect to? Cliff Booth, great. Bell bottoms, cowboy boots, Hawaiian button downs with white beaters, bingo. So every night I'd go out and I'd dress up and I, we'd dress up and we'd dance and we'd go to places and it wasn't places that we needed to go to because of status. We just went to places where there were people that we can play with. And if there was an event, we were there. You can hear us. We didn't really care to look like fools. We were too busy playing, trying to discover the aspects of ourselves with the characters that perhaps maybe we adopt for a little. And we would come back and we'd play Halo 2. And for a competitive bodybuilder at the time, I would never eat ice cream. I would end my days by going to McDonald's, getting a McDonald's swirl, and then coming back to the gym where the Xboxes were, and we'd play till 4 a.m. until I'm like, oh, bro, I got a client at 10 a.m. And I wake up and I wasn't tired. For the first time in my life, I wasn't tired. I was getting less sleep. This play eventually allowed me to discover something and I wanted to share it with you. There's this one time in the game where not only it was difficult, we couldn't get past it and it was 4 a.m. I was sweating and I was thinking about it and I was like, David, I don't think you can do this. I look at him and I put my hand up, so I was like, I don't think you can do this. And he goes, bro, I can do it. Why are you giving up? And remember, he's the one who sucks at the game. I'm one of the greatest Halo players I know. And I'm telling him, you can't do it. We can't do it. And he's like, no, Naftali. And he believed it for a second. He's like, Naftali, I think you're right. I don't think we can do it. And I said, we went home. You could tell we had sadness in our eyes. We were defeated. And I said, hey, uh, 6 p.m. tomorrow, I'll pick you up. He's like, that sounds good. We go to the gym and I couldn't stand being a quitter. 
I didn't want to quit. I wanted to go back to playing as many times as I needed to until I beat the level. And we finish our workout. I come to the gym and I go, David, David, sit down. I said, we will. And if you guys wanted to know this about the game is it doesn't save. If you don't beat the level, it won't save. Meaning you have to go through the level. And it was the longest level of the game. And I look at him and I tell him and I go, David, we are going to beat that map. We are going to beat that level. I know that we couldn't last night and we were playing until 4 a.m. in the morning when I had to be up in a couple hours. We are going to beat this whole game without saying we skipped a level on Legendary. And we're like, yeah, and I was like, go. I had a Tony Robbins seminar before I turned on the Xbox. And when I turned it on, it was right where we left off. And we look at each other and we're like, no way. On the first shot, we beat the Prophet, the hardest level on Halo 2 on Legendary. Shortly after, in a, in a series of days, we ended up beating the game. When we beat the game, I put down the controller, and I don't even know how to explain this. I knew what I wanted to do. I look at my friend David and I go, I'm done training people. I'm done with fitness. I'm done with anything that isn't going to be helping people and speaking to help people change their life, to get closer to themselves and to understand why they're here. And he looks at me and he kind of goes like, so that was weird. Now you're probably thinking, how did Halo 2 make you realize that? Well, I'll explain. I realize that there's nothing I can't succeed in doing if I really connect to it. The video game showed me that. I asked myself a question and I said, what do I connect to the most? What scares me the most? What is the one thing that I know that I want to do? And it's this, and nice to meet you. The video game didn't just, wasn't just a childish experience. It made me realize that a life connected to yourself feels like you're playing throughout your whole life without you questioning if you're working. There's gonna be work in everything that we do. Hell, there was work in Halo 2. I realized that a lot of the time people never get to see who they are because they forget that play shows you who you are. Not just because you built a Lego set or you beat Halo 2, but because of who you are outside of the game. And the success that you want is just learning how the other game works that you connect to. I wasn't a pro at Halo 2. I even remember growing up, one of the things that brought my family closer together was Halo. My brother would go to Yeshiva and come back, and every time he'd come back, I was a better Halo player. And so we'd play more, because he'd get challenged by the fact that his eight-year-old little brother is kicking his ass, sniping him across the map. I would play the campaigns over and over and over on the hardest difficulty with all the skulls. And I've been living without this part of myself until one day, Halo 2, Halo 2. And I had the courage to play. The most beautiful thing that I realized is, is that often we don't know this even about children and psychologically speaking. You aren't just the thing that you created that you played with. You are the vices that exist outside of the play itself. And when I realized this, I said, if I can beat Halo 2 on Legendary with this guy, there is nothing I can't do. So then I asked myself a real question. What do I connect to? And I'm going to beat that the same way I beat Halo 2 on Legendary. My father is one of the greatest men on planet Earth that I consider to be. He can't play Halo 2 on Legendary. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have everything that is required in order to achieve the things that I want and my deepest desires. Now this play is something I incorporate here. You know, if I didn't bring it here, then you wouldn't feel something. And, and this is uh, along with my child. And this is one of the most important psychological concepts that we understand that exists throughout our whole life. And the reason why we are here, darkness, capacity, power, status aside, and it's that you live to fulfill yourself. And that gets you high. Do you ever think about that now? You're growing up, you're getting older, and do you feel that what you do gets you high? Do you feel that you get lost and perhaps maybe even being you? And you've been playing so much, you don't even question the authenticity of what you present because you're so connected to it. I know there's something so admirable about children and something about youth that we have somehow disregarded because we think that we no longer live with it as we grow older because we're too afraid of what people will think of us. And it's that the part of you and the reason why you are here is so that you can get lost playing the greatest character of all, yourself. You really wanna see who you are. It's not what you see when you pull down the tarp. It's not the video game that you play or the money that you make. It's what you do in relationship to what's in front of you. And your ability to play with something is to investigate who you are with whatever is in front of you. Now, play goes into all areas of life. If you want to make your relationship more romantic, you better learn how to start incorporating those playful aspects of yourself that are very childlike. 
you want to start learning how to create a more purpose-driven individual, you better start seeing how you have to incorporate that childlike into the professional or else the professional becomes the antidote to the childlike. And don't think for a second that you don't think your inner child is weak. You most likely do. And now here's the most powerful thing with play is it allows you to investigate the dark parts of yourself and own them. You want to know when people really feel safe? And you want to know when you take things like fire and you learn to harness them? People feel really safe when not only do you learn to control them, you learn to play with them. When you could dance with fire, people really get to experience the beauty of it. When it lights your house on fire, you really get to experience the hell behind the destruction. At the end of the day, what we're realizing here is that we can be very similar to fire and that also the parts of us that we need to discover on the other sides of the play that we're too, we're resisting too much to experience because we remove the intention behind our actions. The intention behind welcoming the fire is what allows you to harness it. And the intention behind picking up the remote control and playing Halo 2 is what allows you to discover yourself. Here's some play for you. Find the thing that you know has helped you deeply connect throughout your whole life as a young child that calls to you now as an adult to reveal the secrets about who you are. And this time, don't play a game to run away from the fear. Play a game to find yourself.